Hi, everyone. Welcome to Circle U. We are excited to bring to you Audience Manager Revamped. Um, we'll go ahead and get kicked off today. We will start with our usual housekeeping items. So we have Circle U webinar series, as you know, it's our monthly webinar series where we talk about best practices, share different product releases, and make sure that we are here to provide you with the best information, the most up-to-date information about the platform and how you guys can be successful. So if you have a question, please do not be shy. We like these to be very interactive. You can answer, or I'm sorry, enter any questions into the little pane um, on the bottom of your uh, webinar page. This will be recorded, so we'll send you an email with a link afterwards, so please feel free to share that with your team as well. If you have any technical difficulties, you can jot down, jot down that number and give us a call. Our team is standing by to help you for anything that might come up. And as always, keep the conversation going with at Circle on our Facebook, Twitter, or LinkedIn page. All righty, so I'm very excited today because I have one of my favorite people here at Circle. Um, Quok, he is our one of our senior software engineers, and Quok and I have been working at Circle for about three and a half years. Right? Yeah, around there. Around there, yeah. And we, so when I first started at Circle, he was one of the um, one of the only software engineers besides Tarek, our CEO at the time. So Quok and I have been here for quite a while, and it's an honor to have him on this webinar today. Are you excited? I'm very excited to be here today, Maddie. <laughs> yes. You know that. <laughs> Awesome. All right. So we will just quickly go over um, a few ways in which we want to be an extension of your team. Obviously, we have these um, webinar series to help you, again, share best practices. I wanted to touch on the fact that we have a very thorough help desk, um, and it's available for you guys to search at any time. We have over 200 articles that we're constantly updating once we release new product features and, and all that information. So please feel free to use that. Um, we also have the chat bot, as you know, located in the bottom right-hand corner of every circle.com page, so don't be shy. We're always here to help you guys. Um, and then the last thing that I'll mention is the circle roundup, which is our circle circle. Um, so if you, most of you as admins should be um, subscribed to that, uh, but if not, feel free to ping me on the chat bot, and we'll make sure that you guys are uh, introduced to the circle roundup, where you'll receive a bi-weekly email with best practices and, again, product updates. All righty. So as you know, last last Circle U webinar, we touched on content creator. Um, so this is just a quick roadmap so you can see what, we're, what we've been working on, what Quok and, and the engineering team have been working really hard to provide you guys um, these next steps and how the product is going to be evolving. So we will go ahead and hop right into Audience Manager. So I know this is something that Quok has worked on specifically. Um, and with this, I mean, you've seen a lot of changes throughout the Circle platform. I think back in the day, you were like one of the only engineers that were yes, coding it, right? Yes, I would uh, do anything. All the changes. <laughs> anything <laughs> and so now, now that we have a huge team and we have um, our products team, we're really being more strategic about how we can form the platform for you guys. So with that being said, as you'll notice within Audience Manager, which is going to be in the same place that Audience Manager was before, just near drop-down menu, um, you'll see that there's a new fresh, and look, um, new fresh look and feel, and it's starting to match all the other um, updates and product releases that we've recently come out with. So insights and then our content manager. And again, as we continue to go through the rest of the platform, it'll have this new fresh look and feel and be a lot more user friendly. So um, one of the things that I wanted to call out is that at the top of the audience manager screen, you now will always have a view of the total number of subscribers you have in your account. So before you had to kind of search around and find this information, but now it's always in the top left bar for you, so it's uh, readily available and easy for you to find. Then with our next big feature, um, we have, this is very exciting, especially for me, um, we have this universal search. Quack, can you tell like, us a little bit more about what this does and allows them to do that didn't before? Yeah, Bob, before you only be able to search across the subscribers, but now you can search across from uh, our, our opt-in status. So if you have a uh, someone come up with questions like, hey, I haven't received this email, you can go ahead and enter in that email at the top, and that will search you. And more, more than likely, they, if they haven't like, received an email, then it would be under balanced. 
Awesome. And then we provide those bounce reasons now too. Yeah, so it's a lot easier. Whereas before with the unsubscribes and um, blocks, you would have had to kind of search through the pages themselves. Now this gives you a much easier um, access point to search your entire audience across all those status points. So it's really exciting. And hopefully I know that we've heard that a lot from our users. So we're excited to push that out to you guys. Um, another thing that I will mention, and this is really exciting and uh, something that you know who on the team came up with this one, the inline editing? Is that you? Uh, it was Sam. Sam, uh -huh. one designer. of our, our product designers who was on our last webinar. Um, so again, we really worked together, the entire team, to figure out how we can make this more usable for you. So as you'll notice with the inline editor, you can now just click the little edit button. You can change the name. So let's say I want to change this to Rose. And then if you want to change the email address, you can do that there. And then the other thing we now allow is for um, a subscriber to be added to multiple segments at one time. So before you had to add them to just one segment. With this inline editing, you now can remove or update their status or their um, segmentation. And then you can easily just save that. So save that, saving that inline information, making it a lot easier for you guys to do that. Okay, so now that we've talked about how to universally search the audience and how to inline edit. One of the other things that we are excited to show you is the ability to edit a subscriber um, a lot more easily. So now, once you click on the little checkbox next to someone's name after you search them, or if you're just looking here in the audience manager itself, you now have options to update their segments. So you can add to segments, remove from segments, you can also set their privacy. So a lot of you have probably heard about GDPR, which is the EU's um, General Data Regulation Privacy Act. And what this does is it ensures that every user in your audience has the ability to understand what data is being collected about them. And they have the option to turn it on or off. Um, this is specifically for the EU, although uh, California is implementing some of these same rules. So just being aware of some of the, the you know, worldwide regulations that are being up to date is important. But now what we can see is you have the ability to change the audience, um, their privacy settings on your end. So if someone emails you and says, hey, I don't want you to personalize my experience, but I still wanna receive your newsletters. You can do that easily here. And then lastly, you have the opt-in status. So we've updated this to allow for a lot more um, you know, availability. So before when you were to opt someone out, you're just opting them out of everything altogether. Now we've created different sections in which they can opt out or opt into the platform. So Kwok, can you describe what uh, the opt-in status for a dedicated email would be first, just holistically? Okay, uh, dedicated emails only is when uh, you want to send out like a a one message to like multiple users. Right. Okay. Like a quick updates uh, on like internal uh, events or whatever. And you only want them to receive that dedicated email, right? Yes. You don't want them to receive the personalized newsletters that are going out automatically. Okay. Awesome. So, with that being said, you have this option to update those opt-in um, statuses or preferences here within Audience Manager as well. Okay. So as you've seen across the platform, um, as we've been updating, there has been um, some question on, hey, you know, there were features that we used to be able to access and we can't find them now. What we've done is just kind of tuck them away. They're still there, still all the same functionality, but we've made it a little bit more um, user friendly. So you don't always have to be prompted with sections of the platform that you might not necessarily use all the time. So for instance, within Audience Manager, we have this little filter button where now you can filter your audience based on segment, personalization, um, their opt-in status, their privacy status, and then if you want to see you know, just admins or only your subscribers. So well, let's go ahead and set one of these filters up. So let's say we want to see everyone that is for profit and then we want to see if they have not personalized. We'll go ahead and apply those filters, and then this will provide you a list. 
The great thing here is now you can export the subscribers and if you need to bring this to you know, some other team to provide them information on the subscribers or who's in that list, it's very easy for you to do that now, whereas before we didn't really have that functionality. Okay. So with the filters themselves, we've also added another piece that makes it easier to create bulk actions. So for instance, I'm going to go ahead and just search my name here. Within these bulk actions, you now can select um, an entire group or just a few people and update their segments themselves, their privacy settings, or their opt-in status. So again, let's say if I wanted to change the opt-in status for all of these people, I could unsubscribe them. And it's going to say, hey, do you want to unsubscribe all three of these people? And you can obviously click yes or no there. So it'll give you a little bit more um, availability to do things in bulk so you don't have to go through one by one in the audience section and really um, be able to manage your list in a much more effective and efficient way. So now that we've kind of walked through how you can edit and change the preferences for the subscribers, one of the other things that we really focused on is how we can make the import of subscribers of your list easier and the, um, the adding of a, a singular subscriber much easier as well. So we will walk through how you can add a single subscriber, which you'll, you'll notice is on the subscribers page. Um, who are you going to add? Uh, let me add Maddie and circle, <laughs> circle. Perfect. And um, the full name is not um, required, but if you know it, it's better. It looks more professional, just in case you need to send uh, dedicated emails out with their personalized fields so uh, as a full name. Yeah, good tip. So, I like that. So not necessarily need a full name like that, at least the first name. Yeah. Right. Then uh, with the change here, it's like you can add them uh, one user to like multiple uh, segments. Before you can do that, you have to add just to one segment. Awesome. So it cuts so, down on that time of so, having to, you know, re-upload them to multiple different segments. And same thing there where if you want uh, her to be receiving dedicated emails only, you can turn that on or off. And then you, you have to consent before you submit. Then you can see her, like, add it to the top. Perfect. You can see all the segments that you added me to when I was subscribed. Um, once this um, as a user once i'm subscribed i will receive the welcome email um, and then once i do go through that welcome email and i personalize that date will be noted here so lots of really great information for you guys to keep track of um, on your end when you're uploading your list okay so with the import of subscribers again as i mentioned we really wanted to focus on making this a lot more simple um, we get you know a few questions on how people need to structure their uh, data before they upload it into Circle. And typically the success team will help you during launch, but we wanna empower you as our customers to be able to do this on your own. We want you to feel that you don't need to come to us if, if you need to upload a list, um, so you're not waiting on us. So again, empowering you guys to have all the information necessary to be successful with uploads. So here with an import of the subscribers, um, now it's a lot more easy to drag and drop a list, and it provides you the details as to how the format of that list needs to be, um, you know, set in place before you're going to upload. So number one, um, the spreadsheet itself, typically if it's in an Excel sheet, um, you'll have column number one, which has to have the email address of the subscribers, and then column number two needs to be a combination of the first and last name if you have that data. As Quack as mentioned, it's not required, um, but as a best practice, we, we definitely suggest that. So once you have that spreadsheet of all the data, then you can easily export that, um, that document as a CSV file. Um, so, and what does CSV stand for again? Cascading spreadsheet. <laughs> okay, perfect. So what that really does is on the back end of our system, it just puts a comma in between the email and the full name so our system can easily understand the data itself. So um, just a little technical info on the back end, but other than that, and then Kwok, do we have that um, that example list? That, yes. Okay, perfect. So we can drag and drop that so we can show you again how we can um, easily upload and drag and drop that entire list. So some of the, the same questions you'll be asked, it's going to say, hey, this is this the correct file name? Um, it's going to ask you if you want them to only receive dedicated email. If so, you can toggle that on. 
And then um, over here, if you want to include them to any segments, again, as Quark, Quark mentioned, we've updated this functionality where you can include them in multiple segments at the same time. And then you would easily click, I have consent um, for these individuals to subscribe. So just because of CamSpan um, Act of 2003, we want to make sure that we are uploading only subscribers and users who have opted into your newsletters in the past. Um, we don't want to spam anybody and we don't want to ruin the reputation of your, of your newsletters. So after that, you would just simply hit the submit button. So then voila, um, it's going to upload automatically and then you'll get an email with a confirmation letting you know once those subscribers have been successfully uploaded. So I think those are the major pieces of audience manager. Am I forgetting anything? I know you worked you worked a while on this, so <laughs> you know all the back end information, but that's it. Awesome. So the only other thing that we wanted to quickly take a minute um, to show you today before we open up for questions is our dedicated email feature. Um, we get a few questions on how dedicated email feature um, might look and feel in the future. Um, if you've been in the platform recently, you will notice that we have changed the look and feel again to match the newer sections of the Circle platform. So it's a lot more user friendly, it looks a little nicer, cleaner tables, um, the information is laid out a little bit more um, you know, strategically than we had it before. Um, the main thing here that I will mention is that now within dedicated email, previously when you were to schedule a dedicated email, it was it noted that the send time was automatically set to Eastern Standard Time. We've now changed that across the platform. So anytime that you upload an event into the content manager or you're about to send a dedicated email, when you select the time at which you would like a specific newsletter to go out, it is going to default send in, the, in your time zone. So under the settings and defaults, um, you mentioned the time zone in which you would prefer your newsletters go out. So this is going to automatically reflect that. So that's just a little quick update I wanted to mention with dedicated email. And then lastly, um, how we have changed the save as reusable templates. I know a lot of our customers use that um, to send, you know, bi-weekly board members updates and things of that, of that nature. So that button for saving as a reusable template has moved. So I just wanted to quickly take a moment to let you know where that lives. So let's say you are designing a, um, a dedicated email. After you design it and you're ready to, to send to your audience or save, you'll just quickly go over to file and hit save. This will allow you to create a um, you know, usable template. If I can spell today. There we go. So then you can easily save it. And then you can always find your saved templates under the saved templates tab. So you can see all the ones that we would have had saved for um, the circle circle. So just wanted to quickly mention that because I know we've had a couple questions um, in regards to, to that piece. Um, we will be updating a little bit more of the uh, dedicated email feature in the coming months but wanted to show you what the new look and feel is as of today. All righty. Well, I think we've kind of gone over everything, which is perfect timing, so I typically like to leave about 10 minutes for questions. So what I'll go ahead and do is I will open this up for questions from the audience. Let me go ahead and pull the questions tab up. Perfect. All right, guys, so let's see what questions that we have coming through. All right, so we have one question, and the question is, what is a bounce reason? That's a great question, and um, I always have to tell people this when we're talking, you know, in, in the chat bot. Sometimes we use language internally that we know what it means, and we're just in, in you know, we're in it in, in the weeds, so we use those lang that language, and if we ever say something that doesn't make sense to you, or you're like, hey, what is that? Please do not hesitate. You know, we're blinded by the fact that we're in this all day, every day, so... Um, we need to make sure that we're providing you with the language and the verbiage that helps you best. Um, so, Quark, do you mind explaining a little bit more about what a bounce reason is and like why that would occur? Bounce reason would occur if, uh, let's say you're trying to send a newsletter or dedicate email to the user with an uh, email, mm -hmm. and then the server didn't recognize it or couldn't get to the server, then it would like, respond with uh, a, like, a coded reason. Okay. Reason. So, 
the boundaries and against that reason. Okay, perfect. So an example of like why an email would bounce. So let's say, I think I've had this happen in the past. I just want to confirm. So if someone um, was working at, you know, an organization and then they left that organization, typically that email address is, is canceled. So they don't, you know, have access to that email any, any longer. So if we try to then send an email to that address after that person has left the company, that would produce a bounce in a bounce reason, yes, correct? Yes, we we'll, we'll say uh, the reason would be like the user cannot find the user. Okay, cannot find user, like just you know, invalid email or something of that reason. Gotcha. Awesome, that makes sense. Thank you for that question, that was a great question. All right, so let's see, we have a couple more coming in. All right, if I select some people and then move them to the next page, can I perform actions on the people from the previous page or are those selections lost? So I think you're referring to selecting and editing people from audience manager. Let's see, let's go back up to audience manager real quick. Oops. So it, when, it, when you select it and you hit, hit the next page, and next, oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, I got it. I said that. So when we're moving down to yeah. the next page, and then go back to that page, and we're lost. So we wouldn't keep, we don't uh, keep the selection, but usually uh, best practice would be like you only take action on what you selected and what you see right. on the screen. Sense. So just in case you accidentally select someone and go to the next page, and then you want to unsubscribe them, then. Uh, you wouldn't know that the person you accidentally selected is unsubscribed now to. Right, that makes sense. And I would say just a best practice there is to make sure that you are searching. So if you want to take an action or a bulk action to a list of people, typically there might be some type of indicator. Um, so you know whether or not they have personalized, that might be a good way. So setting up these filters before you start clicking on those audience members, I think will help narrow down and alleviate any um, you know, information being lost from switching the page to page. Now I will mention that within Audience Manager, you do have the option to view more rows too. So the default is 25, um, but if you want to up that default um, view, you can change it to 150 and so on and so forth. So it just gives you a little bit more flexibility there when you are working through Audience Manager. Okay, I think we have one more question here um, before we end today's webinar. Uh, I will go ahead and let's see. Is there a way to tell if someone is an administrator of the circle? That's a great question. Um, and yes, in fact, there is. So if we're looking at Audience Manager, what you will notice is I will scroll down here. You'll see the list of actual subscribers in your account. And you'll notice a little green icon, a little person icon next to that person's name if they are administrators. So I'll go ahead and actually filter that out to see um, administrators. I just want to see admins. So this will provide you a list of all the admins and you can see here um, easily and clearly that the little green icon is going to notify you that this person is a specific admin to the account that you are looking into. So. Great question. I love that question. Um, one other thing. Oh, I do see one other question coming in. I love all these questions. Thank you guys. And if we don't get to your questions, um, hold tight after the webinar. We have a log of all the questions and we'll be, be sure to connect with you and get those answers for you. Um, so this question real quick is, can I sort? So sorting, you can sort by the you have actually multiple options up here in the top left-hand corner of any of the pages you'd be looking at. So let's go ahead and clear this filter real quick. So let's say you want to um, sort by the privacy or the date personalized. So you want to see uh, people who have most recently personalized. You have the option to select that in the drop-down menu and then choose the up or down arrow saying, um, I want you know increasing table descending. or descending table. Um, so here, you can, if you want to switch the ascending or descending, you just easily slip, select the little arrow button and then the, the new sort option will appear and it'll give you the list of people who have in ascending order or descending order gone ahead and personalized. That's a great question. Um, we also, uh, you can uh, do uh, ascending and descending uh, right next to the column you're sorting by. So 
go quicker. Oh, I didn't even notice that. How nifty. I like Our designer that. wanted that in there, and he was so happy to have that. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I love to hear that. Well, I want to thank you guys again for your time today. I know we are um, getting close to our 30-minute mark, um, and I want to leave you guys with maybe a little bit of time to go grab coffee or something um, before you have to head back into the rest of your day. Um, last thing I will mention is that um, you need to keep your calendar open on December 5th at 1 p.m. for our next Circle U webinar. Um, we will be uh, releasing more information about the the uh, actual webinar itself and what it will cover here in the next few days, but keep that time on your calendar open. Um, hopefully these webinars are able to provide you with a lot more information and, and share best practices with you. So we wanna thank you guys again, and we will see you in December. Bye.